When my family moved across the country, we sold almost everything to make it happen. Relocating from the wine country of Southern California to the upstate of South Carolina meant rebuilding our home, one thrift store fine at a time. I'm a writer, speaker, published author, and now the owner of Carolina and Country, selling uniquely designed and thoughtfully handcrafted goods to customers coast to coast. Hi friends, I'm your host, Christine Chapel, and I'd like to invite you into the Carolina and Country Workshop, where the trial and error of upcycle design takes place. Watch the process from start to finish, from thrift store find to home decor treasure and all the messiness in between. I am no expert. I'm just a married mother of three trying to live that upcycled life. Well, friends, there's one more project left to show you from my time at the Designer in You studio in Georgia. We are moving on to the thrift store magazine holder. And after looking at the piece and taking it apart and trying to figure out if we were gonna keep its structure, we've decided to try and accomplish a really big goal in turning these pieces of the magazine holder into really amazing wall decor. I cannot wait, it's going to be a challenge for sure, but I think it's the most creative use of this thrift store find. And so let's see what the team can put together for this transformation. We're taking the side panels of the magazine holder and turning them into jewelry storage. We make some molds and glue them into place, then use silver French gilding wax to begin underlaying some highlights that we will cover with a dark blue paint. decide to paint with a smaller brush to get into the nooks and crannies of the molds, but still leave some of the white and silver to peek out from underneath. While that dries, we start working on the ideas for the end panels of the magazine holder. Francine, the owner of Designer and You, helps me to mix the texture Toscana with some green paint to give this flat surface some grit. Then we decide to use a beautiful rub-on transfer, which is also part of the Designer and You product line. We carefully position the transfer onto the board, and with the provided wood stick, we start transferring the image. With a sanding block, I begin the work of distressing the transfer. I was sanding our repurposed magazine holder end <laughs> into, uh, we were turning it into some wall decor with a really neat rub-on transfer, and the sander and the transfer did not play well <laughs> together. And now I have a gouge on my board and I'm sad. So we need to fix it. We don't have time to finish this project in the studio and it's such a bummer. I hate to leave a problem unaddressed. While I drive home to South Carolina trying to figure out how to salvage this mistake, let's invite my friend Amanda Whiting to speak some truth about renewal to us all. Maybe there'll be something in her message that will inspire a creative solution. to talk to you today about renewal. This past fall we moved our family out to our farm, all nine of us, all of our animals, but fall didn't last long before winter was here. As the leaves fell from the trees I found myself aching for summer. But then I thought about what those leaves become. Romans 5, 3 through 5, tells us of a similar story what God does with our troubles. He takes those troubles and then he turns them into perseverance. Perseverance into patience, patience into hope. As the leaves fall from the trees, they'll hit the ground. They'll become something new over the winter. Nourishment for those very same trees. And we'll see that evidence in the new life that grows in the spring. Can you believe that today? That God is producing, upcycling a new thing in you? That he's taking your troubles if you give them to him. And he will change them into patience, change that into perseverance and upcycle that into hope. I hope you can believe today that you have a God who is at work in you and that he will renew all things for his good. Hmm, troubles into perseverance, perseverance into patience, and patience into hope. I think that's just the reminder I need to have the courage to try a new direction with this board. Back at home, I look at the pieces of the deconstructed magazine holder and a new idea begins to flow. You know what that means. Hardware and power tools. 
We locate the hardware I need to tackle my ideas, some tiny gold hooks and silver hinges. Remember the handle of the magazine holder? Well, I'm thinking I'm going to cut it into two pieces and make them stands for a couple of the projects. A simple cut and some sanding and you'd never know this used to be a handle at all. And you know what? I don't like the ends of these side panels, so off with their heads. Let's really transform these puppies into something totally fresh. Again, some light sanding and you'd never know that they used to be there. This is turning out great. I've got to touch up the paint on the panel I worked on in Georgia. So I attach and paint the gold hooks and now this jewelry holder can accommodate necklaces and bracelets. For the second side panel, I'm going to do some very similar things, but this will be a horizontal orientation instead, so it can be placed on a tabletop. I lay down some paint with the idea that I will use the Designer in You Make It Crackle to create some texture and depth. Once the first layer of paint is dry, I'm ready to apply the Make It Crackle medium to the entire board, even the molds I glued. All it takes is one coat of this medium to create a really neat crackling effect. Once I've got it covered, I wait until it's dry and then apply my top coat of paint. After a few minutes, the crackling begins to form, revealing the color underneath. Whew, I am juggling lots of projects right now. It's time to call in some help for my eldest child, Brianna. I've got an idea to renew the board that was causing me so much trouble. I'm thinking I wanna try and see about making it a book stand for the kitchen. I have Brianna prime and paint some decorative knobs my sister-in-law mailed to me for occasions such as this. After painting the handle turn stand, I attach it to the back of the board with the hinge set I bought. Well, how did the front turn out, you ask? Wait until the end of the show for the reveal. In the meantime, check out the ribbon I fixed to the piece to make sure the stand was secure and ready for book holding. Brianna is still hard at work prepping the next board for me to upcycle. Some sanding preps the surface to grab onto the paint, and of course I use the Designer in You Brush and Project Cleaning Solution to get all the dust particles off. We've got one more board to paint and I'm really excited about the color scheme. There's going to be lots of neutrals but also pops of green and red. And I am using a rub-on transfer from our friends at Designer in You. It's a beautiful, beautiful transfer. Can't wait to get it on the wood, but first I have to paint it. I'm painting with Grandma's Pearls and Totally Taupe. Two colors I have not worked with before, but I can't wait to see how it all comes together. So let's get painting. I only paint one coat of Grandma's Pearls onto this board because I know I'm going to distress the surface a bit. Once I position the transfer, I use the stick to press it onto the surface. Because the transfer doesn't cover the entire board, I use scissors to cut excess pieces to create coverage for the top handle portion. With the edges of the transfer hanging over in certain places, I lightly sand to contour and blend the edges. After some sanding to distress the board, I'm ready for two coats of Designer in You Matte Poly. I am so excited that the idea to turn one thrift store dud into four pieces of home decor treasure actually worked out.
The magazine holder was a pretty ambitious project. When I first purchased it from the thrift store, I was just gonna put some paint on it and make it a flower planter. But I was challenged by my friend Francine at Designering You to think outside the box. And so by deconstructing the piece, taking it completely apart, we saw the potential for four different pieces of home decor. I almost got derailed when the mishap happened during the sanding of the rub-on transfer for one of the boards. I was so frustrated and down on myself because I had messed up and it wasn't perfect anymore. I nearly considered throwing the entire piece away. I thought it was unsalvageable. But once I heard Amanda's words in her upcycled minute, I knew that I had to be patient. It was really helpful to me to remember that when I am imperfect and messed up and maybe there's a little too much sandpaper in one area or the other, God doesn't just simply toss me aside and throw me away. He commits to renewing that area, to rebuilding it, and to breathing new life into it. Sometimes when we're broken, we think that we are also beyond repair. But the wonderful news of the gospel is that there's nobody outside of the reach of God's grace. Our God is a resurrection God. He is in the business of making all things new, including you and me. No matter what the scars, no matter what the past, He is committed to changing us from the inside out. I want to thank Amanda for her Upcycled Minute devotion today, and I also want to thank our special sponsor, Designer In You. If you liked today's episode, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below and let us know what your favorite part was. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so that you don't miss an Upcycled Minute. And tune in next Friday for TUL Uncut, the unedited, unscripted video interview series hosted by Bobby Shea. She will be interviewing our Upcycled Minute guest, Amanda Whiting, and it is a conversation you are not going to want to miss. The wonderful thing about taking time to reflect on remi- <laughs> The wonderful thing about taking time to ref- It was really helpful to re- Oh my gosh. It was really helpful to me to remember that when I am imperfect